Eureka does it real. So. They're a reflection of what's being grown in the water. It's a reflection of the coastal landscape that's here. They're a part of the ecosystem that's here. We've got the world's best oysters here. You know, the water, you see the water, it don't get any better than this. Farming in this pristine and remote environment really provides a distance problem. That's a logistics problem for ourselves, for our product. I could, you know, I could sell hundreds of dozens of oysters, but I can't provide that many oysters right now because of the limitations of the travel and the cold storage facility. We grow these oysters where there's no population, no industry. There's just ocean and forest. my uh, great uncle painted. It's a uh, bald mountain. This is where my dad's family lived in the logging camp, uh, Port Alice. We met Quebec. I met his dad first uh, back in the old days when they had the uh, weekend warrior program. Yeah, that's what got us started. And uh, I didn't know what I was doing. I just bought a farm to be able to live the lifestyle. Jerry, full rain gear. You had was like a coho in a bucket or something, and you had cigars hanging out of your mouth, and looking at my oysters. And going, oh, these look pretty good. And we just started going on adventures, and yeah, taking yeah. me fishing all the time, and showing me how to grow oysters, pretty much. I met Katie on the Malspina, coming up one summer. Just started talking to her on the boat, and uh, haven't really stopped talking to her since. First, I think I just asked you like what you wanted your business to look like, and I think that's kind of how I first started helping. I, would, I wouldn't even be where I'm at right now if it wasn't for her. Very quiet. He's he's up on all the latest things, and he's you know it's nice to have somebody that's an expert like that to share their ideas with you and not be afraid of you know you taking your customer away because it's not that way. After I got out of the Navy, you can see my sweatshirt from the Academy. You know, then it was. Uh, into the phase of I'm going to wear out every piece of clothing I've acquired all these years as I drop out of society. <laughs> the Alaska Oyster Cooperative is a small group of oyster growers based in Sea Otter Sound. When we were doing our bylaws, one of the main things, what it, and we wrote it right in there, it had to be integrity based all the way through. And I tell you what, it, it really has been. Yeah, all the members agree that there's benefit in us collaborating, even from just discussing ideas and talking about our problems. We can bounce information off each other, like this works, this doesn't work. Yeah, different ideas and all that. And, yeah. Now we're stepping it up and gonna be doing actual infrastructure improvements that are gonna benefit each farm in terms of logistics and storage and all the details. We have in hand Tidelands lease. Once we close the paperwork on the Uplands lease, we can start pulling product off the dock into trucks and over to the airport. Right now I can take my processing unit and I can park it right here and then hook right up to power right off the bat and be ready to go. Right now we ship one day a week, but what it'll do is it'll open up the opportunity where it can ship multiple days a week. It'll actually hold product in cold storage increasing the efficiency of not only my farm, but for my fellow co-op farms. It also gives other farms a reason to join the co-op. It's gonna be a nexus of the farmers to employment opportunity and the movement of our product and offer directly to the public right off the farm oysters that are excellent nutritional value and would be a, a good piece of food security right there. This project here, Minocity is really a keystone of the Prince of Wales oyster economy.